friends uh, i welcome all of you to this topic profit and gains of business and profession you already know there are five heads of income like uh, salaries then income from house property profit and gains of business or profession their capital gain and income from other sources and uh, there are different methods of computing income under different heads and uh, when coming to this particular head that is profit and gains of business and profession here also there is a particular method uh, there are some ways to compute income under this uh, here what exactly happens since business situations are different uh, different uh, businessmen if you say different entrepreneurs they follow different practice to arrive at their profit is it not the way they recognize their revenue the way or the kind of expenditure they incur that varies from business to business so there is in fact no standardization as regards to uh, how to book expenditure how to uh, let us say arrive at the revenue etc it varies from business to business of course to some extent accounting has been uh, standardized okay but still there are many areas where you can find differences are there okay so keeping that point in view how we compute we have to think how to compute income under this head the normal process is that first whatever method we are following let us first compute what is your business profit okay by following the normal method so normally as a businessman let us say you might be knowing what is your revenue you might be knowing what is your expenditure so revenue minus expenditure you will be able to find out what is your profit okay let us let part do that after that what happens income tax department will see what is the tax law we'll see if there is some expenditure which you have taken it as an expenditure but which is not allowed now you have to disallow that thing. how can you disallow you have already arrived at the profit we'll add this disallowances to that so profit will be more is it not and if at all there are certain expenditures which are allowed under tax law but you have not claimed now you should claim that thing so that will be deducted okay similarly if you have recognized a revenue and there are certain other ways or there are some other revenue which needs to be recognized under income tax law okay that will add up your profit so that has to be added and if your revenue there is some item which are not to be recognized as revenue that should be deducted so like this we'll do some adjustment to the profit and by doing that we'll be able to find out what is the income under income tax law under this set under the head profit and gains of business and profit hope you have understood this idea okay what i am explaining you is that you first of all arrive at the normal profit then you have to do some adjustments keeping in mind our tax laws okay expenditures which are taken but not allowed that has to be added up to the profit like this like this you have to do adjustments okay so first let us uh, uh, first let us learn some concepts then we will be learning the charging section that is section 28 we will be learning first let us learn some of the concepts of business going to share the screen with you right now name of the head is profits and gains of business or profession first let us understand what is business in our day to day life we use the term many times so but section 213 defines what is business it include any trade commerce or manufacture or any adventure or concern in the nature of trade commerce and manufacture so all these activities trade commerce manufacture or any adventure it might be a single event all these things are included it defines included uh, in, in the term business and it is an inclusive definition you see it says business includes all these things so similar activities may also be regarded as business then what is profession profession has not been defined in the act but by taking the general meaning it means occupation requiring some degree of learning okay let us say the profession of uh, let us say medical practitioner profession of a chartered accountant these are the examples of profession and uh, the term profession includes vocation okay vocations may be require some kind of experience or skill to do some activities that is vocation but whatever might be it may be business or trade profession it is vocation all these incomes are uh, 
taxed or you can say all these incomes can be classified under this set profit and gains of business employees. So far as income tax law is concerned, from a chargeability point of view, there is no difference between business, profession or vocation. All of them are chargeable to business income. Okay. And uh, we also need to understand the meaning of profit at this stage. Business, I think you have broadly understood. The meaning of profit is that this you see, friends, the profit uh, can be realized in cash as well as in kind. Okay. So profit may be realized in money or in money's worth. So just because cash has not been received, that doesn't mean that there is no profit. Profit can be realized in kind also. Okay. But here you have to keep one thing in mind that capital receipts are not generally taken into account while computing the profit. What is capital receipt? Any receipt? Oh, okay. Initially, when you were discussed about the concept of income, at that time we had understood what is capital receipt. Okay, one kind of receipt is business uh, revenue receipt, other kind of receipt is capital receipt. Capital receipts are normally not income unless specifically they are included. And whereas revenue receipts are normally income unless they are specifically excluded. These concepts are there in the basic basics of income tax when you are learning. These concepts have been discussed. If you want to learn, for this thing, recorded videos are available in the in our channel. You can find it. Okay, so capital receipts are not taken into account for computation of profit. Then one more issue, few issues we are going to learn. In fact, voluntary receipts. Sometimes people receive some money as voluntary receipts. That means the party who is paying is under no obligation uh, obligation to pay, but still he is paying in the course of business and profession. Okay, suppose you are exercising some business and profession, somebody is giving you some money, maybe in the form of donation or some contribution, something like this. So you are receiving this thing in relation to your, or in the course of your business or profession. Hence, all these incomes will be considered as income and they will be taken into account to arrive at your profit. Right, so payment of payment which are voluntarily made by persons, who are under no obligation to pay anything at all would be income in the hands of the recipient if they were received in the course of business or in the ex course of exercise of profession or profession. Okay, so these concepts you have to keep in the mind. Voluntary receipts are also uh, income. Okay, for example, one example we can see suppose, uh, suppose any amount paid to a lawyer by a person who is not a client, but has benefited from the lawyer's professional service. But, okay, some money has been given by a person to a lawyer because the lawyer has performed something, some professional service, and this person has got some benefit out of this. Even if this person has not appointed to the lawyer. So in the lawyer's hand, the money which is received from this third person will be still treated as his professional income. I think you have understood this thing. This is the concept of voluntary receipts. Okay, now friends, uh, few more concepts regarding the meaning of concepts, meaning of this profit. Application of gains is immaterial. How you are applying your receipt, that is immaterial. So we have to see when you are uh, re realizing the receipt, at that time we have to see what, whether it is an income or not. Okay, gains made even for the benefit of the community by public body would also be liable to tax. That is some income has been generated. And let us say that is applied for the benefit of a community. Still then that is liable for tax. Okay, but one thing you have to keep in the mind, uh, this money which has been received that must have been received out of some business which has been carried out uh, during some time sometime during uh, this accounting year. Okay, if business has not been carried out, then or uh, that is uh, that is a different thing. But it is not again necessary that business should have been carried out throughout the accounting year. If some point of time the business was carried out and this kind of money is received, that will be treated as income. Then next concept is that legality or illegality of business. That doesn't matter. Even if income is there, which is generated from the illegal business, that doesn't mean that it is exempt. It is, that is also liable to tax. 
so far as tax laws are concerned there is no distinction between legal income and illegal income if it is illegal income then there will be some consequences under some other law but under tax law it is taxable income from a distinct business you see many people might be engaged in different kind of business some people might have more than one businesses in that case what will happen all this business incomes has to be computed separately and finally they has to be most this profit needs to be aggregated to arrive at the total profit from the business surplus okay if there are multiple businesses the profits generated from each businesses needs to be aggregated okay next concept we are going to learn is about computation of profit how to compute profit as you know the business practices varies it varies from business to business different businesses they follow different practices to arrive at the profit but the normal practice overall practice is that we need to recognize what is the revenue or what is the receipt it may be from sales it may be from services entire receipts or revenue we have to recognize then expenditures that also we need to recognize these are the expenditure related to those kind of activities related to business activities the expenditure has to be deducted after that so if revenue minus expenditure you will be getting profit this is the normal course the normal course will be arriving at uh, and this is how you will be able to arrive at profit okay but there might be some expenditure which are expressly disallowed so one cannot claim that there might be some expenditure which may be allowed even if not in got that needs to be adjusted so this is how some adjustment has to be made to the profit figure which is normally arrived at so computation of profit has to be arrived at by using these methods and this this practice one more thing here we have to keep in mind when we are learning the concept of business income the method of accounting friends most all of us almost know that uh, you see two kinds of methods of accounting are normally followed one is cash method of accounting second is mercantile system of accounting at cash system what we do we recognize the revenue and we also recognize the expenditure only when cash flows in or cash flows out on that basis on the basis of receipt and payment accounting of transactions are done but when coming to mercantile system here we recognize the accruals that means if the revenue is accrued or expenditure has been accrued that also we need to recognize so outstanding expenditure or let us say uh, sales have been made but amount has not been realized so that those things are also recognized under mercantile system of accounting here you have to keep in the mind income tax law allows you to follow any method you may follow cash method of accounting or receipt method of accounting or mercantile system of accounting or you can say accrual system okay there is nothing called as the hybrid system so one is cash system or mercantile system of accounting one of them needs to be from okay but you can follow any method either on cash basis you can arrive at the profit or on mercantile basis you can arrive at the profit but there are certain incomes which broadly you can say two categories of income where treatment has to be made differently okay differently means that has to be recognized only on the basis of receipt even if you are following mercantile system of account this has been specified under section 145b first income is that interest received by an assessee on compensation or enhanced compensation if some compensation has been received it may be compensation for compulsory acquisition or anything something similar to that the so government is paying some compensation or compensation has been paid later on it has been enhanced the enhanced compensation and if these kind of receipts are there even if you are following accrual method of accounting it will be taxable only on receipt basis okay this shall be deemed to be the income of the year in which it is received hope it is clear okay that is one thing. similarly one more aspect is that income for example assistance in the form of subsidy grant cash incentive duty drawback 
these are you can say some benefits which are given by government government grants some subsidy government gives some grant or cash incentive or duty drawback in case of export uh, of certain goods the waiver waiver or concession or reimbursement whatever may be the name which are that is allowed or given by the central government or state state government or any authority or body agency in cash or kind to the assess if that means these kinds of income we are talking about subsidy grant cash incentive duty drawback waiver concession reimbursement whatever may be the name okay if this is the kind of income it shall be taxable in the previous year in which it is received that means irrespective of your method of accounting this is taxable in the year of receipt okay one thing i told you interest etc second thing is that the subsidy grant etc that is taxable in the year of receipt otherwise uh, except all these thing you can follow either cash method or mercantile based method as you like but however here you have to keep in mind that there are various kinds of assets you also know okay various kinds of person okay person means you know individual you may be an individual you may be an huf you may be farm you may be company you may be op boi you may be local authority or you may be artificial judicial person any kind of person it is possible if that person is a company you see company law doesn't allow you to maintain books of account under cash system okay under company law that is not allowed are you getting so under company law if if, if as an assessee you are a company then you have to follow which method of accounting only mercantile system of accounting because cash method you cannot follow under company so you don't have any choice okay other assessees may follow cash method or mercantile method as they like but this kind of income as i told income subsidy interest subsidy etc they have to follow or that is those things are taxable on receipt basis only okay and by following this method one can arrive at the profit and that profit will be adjusted if certain expenditures which need not be allowed which should not be allowed that will be added or certain expenditure which needs to be allowed that is to be deducted certain revenue which has already been taken but that should not have been taken that will be reduced okay so like this adjustment has to be made and will be finally arriving at what is the profit or gain under as what is the profit and gains under the head business of profit okay friends i think up to this you got some idea next concept is that this is one more concept when we are coming to business profession we have to understand this is called as icds icds stands for in Uh, income computation and disclosure standards friends most of most of you might be knowing various kinds of standards which are issued by various professional institutes to deal with different subjects like you know accounting standards you know indian accounting standards or indas you know international financial reporting standards you might be knowing there are cost accounting standards you might be knowing there are secretarial standards you might be knowing there are valuation standards like this various kinds of standards are issued quality control standards auditing standards internal auditing standards so many kind of standards are there standards are issued to follow uniformity in practice okay similarly one more standard is there this is called as income competition and disclosure standards popularly called as icds so as per this standard this has standard has been issued and this is in fact central uh, government is authorized or is empowered to notify the standards for competition of income and consequently uh, these standards that's income competition and disclosure standards have been notified therefore income needs to be computed and relevant things needs to be disclosed in accordance with these standards these standards have to be followed by all assesses except or you could say other than individuals and hua who are not required to get their accounts audited under section 44 ab 44 ab is a section we talks about or this is about tax audit that means the books of accounts of the or the financial statement of the entity needs to be, will be subject to tax audit there are certain conditions are there if the turnover exceeds a particular limit and few other conditions are there then only that needs to be audited 
So if an individual or Hindu unwitted family's accounts are not going to be audited, then they need not follow ICDS, but authorize all other assets needs to follow income competition and disclosure standards. Okay, friends. Okay. Now, these are the list of ICDS. So you can have a look at this. ICDS 1 talks about accounting policies. ICDS 2 talks about valuation of inventories. ICDS 3, it deals with construction contract. ICDS 4, deals with revenue recognition. ICDS 5, deals with tangible fixed assets. ICDS 6, deals with effects of changes in Forex. ICDS 7, deals with government grants. ICDS 8, deals with securities. ICDS 9, deals with borrowing cost. And ICDS 10 deals with provisions, contingent liabilities, and contingent assets. Okay, so one need to follow these standards to arrive at the, or to compute income. Okay, I think you've got this fair idea. With this background, now we are in position to understand uh, the computation of profit and gains under the head business enterprise. Okay. To understand that the first section we'll be learning is about section 28, which is the charging section. But before entering into this thing in slide, I would like to take you to the income tax department website. I'll show you how the section 28 looks like. Then only I'll be showing you the same points in the slide. So let us make a visit to income tax department's website. Give me a moment for that. One second, I'm trying to work on the file right now. Yeah, I think now we'll be able to share the screen. You are watching it here. I am going to income tax department website. Income tax India dot gov dot in. Okay, this is the home page you are seeing. So, as you know, we are going to the, see the charging section or section 28 of Income Tax Act. I'm clicking here under Act. Then I'm going Income Tax Act. So, as I told you, we'll visit to charging section, section number 28. Now, if you see, it's charging section, it talks about Section 28, the title is Property and Gains of Business Profession. Now, let me click there. You'll find this is the provision you see. Okay, so it talks about the following income shall be chargeable to income tax under the head profits and gains of business or profession. So these are the list of the things which will be chargeable. Okay, number one, you see profit and gains of business or profession, which is carried on by SSC at any time during the previous year. When it says at any time, that means you need not carry out the business throughout the period, but you need to carry out at least some time. Even if it is carried out for one day during previous year, still also it is taxable because it is at any time during the previous year. Okay, profits of any business and profession. How to compute this profit and profits and gains? You have to keep in the mind the normal Business practices, normal accounting practices, you have to keep in the mind the system of accounting, cash accounting or mercantile system of 
accounting, that is receipt basis or accrual basis. And at the same time, you have to also keep in the mind income competition and disclosure standards. On that basis, we will be arriving at our income. You see, these are the some income. One is profit and gains. Second point talks about certain compensation. Third talks about income derived some professional association. All these things we are learning one by one. Then profit and sale of licenses, etc., cash assistance. All these things are there. You see, these are the listed things. One more thing: interest, salary, bonus, commission, remuneration received by the partner of a firm. So partners, partners, salary is also business income, not under the head salary income. Earlier, I might have told you this concept. Why it is so? Because of this provision. You see, interest, partner, salary. Here is salary. Partner salary from the firm will be treated as business income because practically there is no employer-employee relationship between partner and the firm. Okay, so these are the some items are noted. Some provisions are there. Then you see there are certain explanations. First explanation deals with what is the agreement, what is service. Second explanation is uh, there. Uh, one more general explanation is there. I will see. Yeah, here is two explanation. Explanation two. You see, it talks about speculative transactions. It talks about speculation business. So friends, just have an idea that speculation business has to be treated as a separate business. Okay, so how to deal with that? We'll be learning that thing in our next session. Okay, I think you had some broad idea about the charging section. This is the section we'll be learning all these things in detail. Now, as I was telling you, the charging section, section you see, talks about income from business profession. This is one item. Next item is compensation or other payment received in various conditions. That also we'll discuss. It. That is also business income. Then income from uh, some specific services provided by the members of trade and professional association. Incentive receives uh, in in relation to certain exports export transactions. Then value of some benefits for benefits as perquisites in connection with the business. Then salary etc received by the partners of a firm. Okay. Then. Uh, any sum received for not carrying out some activity that is also business income, like not sharing know how, patent, copyright, etc. Sum received under key man insurance policy, then fair value of the inventory which is converted into capital asset, then any sum received on account of capital asset referred under section 35 AD. 35 AD means for some specific businesses are there. They are to acquire the asset, 100% is allowed. In the initial year as an expenditure. So any sum received in context of those assets will be treated as business income. Okay, these are the concepts of section 28, which we will be learning subsequently. Then, as you know, explanation I showed you, this talks about speculation business. That aspect also will be learning separately. Friends, we'll stop here today. We created a background. To understand the topic, next class will catch up with the charging section of profit and gains of business function section 20. We stop here. Thank you very, very much. We'll catch up in your next session. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you.